And now, Yehala with Dr. Abu Shanab, brought to you by Bridgeview Chiropractic. اهلا ومرحبا مستمعينا الاعزاء في حلقه جديده من برنامج يا هلا مع دكتور ابو شنب معكم يوليا ريحاني برنامجنا رح يتضمن كل ما هو متعلق بعلاج العظام والام الظهر والمفاصل واصابات الحوادث وغيرها من المواضيع المتعلقه بالعلاج الطبيعي وتقويم العمود الفقري يا هلا مع دكتور ابو شنب ياتيكم يوم الاثنين الساعه الرابعه والنصف بتوقيت شيكاغو على راديو يا هلا فويس البرنامج برعاية عيادة الدكتور رشيد أبو شنب وهو رح يكون معنا في الاستوديو ليشاركنا بمعلومات مفيدة ويعطينا استشارة مجانية في مجال الألام ألام العظام والمفاصل والعضلات اسمحوا لي أرحب بدكتور رشيد أبو شنب دكتور أهلا وسهلا في حلقة جديدة هلا thank you very much for hosting me and You're doing a great job. يعطيك العافية. الله يعافيك. Uh, thank you. دكتور أبو شنب رح أعمل introduction باللغة الإنجليزية. You earned uh, your doctorate degree from National University of Health Sciences in Lombard, Illinois in 1997. دكتور أبو شنب was a faculty member at the school until 2000. He earned his degree as an independent medical examiner in 2004. and his master's in advanced clinical practice in 2012. اهلا وسهلا دكتور واليوم رح يكون عندنا موضوع جديد. طبعا برنامجنا معظمه رح يكون باللغه الانجليزيه لانه المصطلحات الطبيه معظمها بالانجليزي ولكن يعني رح نحاول مرات نشرح بعض المفردات بالعربي. اليوم رح نسلط الضوء على معظم الاصابات الشائعه الناجمه عن حوادث السيارات واصابات العمل كيفية علاجها عن طريق العلاج الطبيعي أو اليدوي Very important topic دكتور Most common injuries or symptoms resulting from auto and work related injuries But first before we start uh, talking about uh, this topic specifically Could you uh, please explain or give us an introduction again about the chiropractic What is chiropractic treatment? Uh, chiropractic in general, it's uh, over 100 years old, and uh, the word chiro, it's, it's meaning hand in, 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 in Greek. In Greek, it's, it's a hand. In mm-hmm. practice, it's the practice of the hand. So chiropractic in general, it's, it's a natural method of, of treatment of the body using uh, manipulation of the spine, using a, a uh, ways to heal the body itself, Uh, through adjusting and manipulating to restore normal function of the spine. Right. يعني العلاج باليد and uh, you must have very flexible hands in nature to be able to actually uh, uh, do all and practice this uh, this kind of treatments. Yes, actually you have to have them a little bit uh, strong. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the issue and strong is, muscles. <laughs> yeah. The issue is... Uh, writing and and uh, after you perform treatment to to go ahead and grab the pen and start to write that's a, a little bit uh, mm. tricky so but uh, i can imagine <laughs> we've been doing it for a while so we're getting used to it يعطيك العافيه دكتور today يعني we will talk about uh, car accidents and injuries and at work uh, work related injuries uh, from your experience experience what are the most common injuries resulting from auto and work related injuries Um, the most common injuries is the uh, spinal injuries by far. And uh, spinal injuries, that is uh, a neck and lower back pain. Um, it could be also herniation. Um, some numbness in the legs or the arms. Uh, patients come in with uh, headaches, uh, dizziness, concussions. Um, some people come in with something called whiplash. I'm not sure if you heard about that word. Mm-hmm. Uh, whiplash, sprain and strain, that's mm-hmm. uh, common as well. Yeah. Uh, we even have some cases come in due to uh, airbag injury, secondary to a car accident, like uh, uh, when the airbag comes too strong for them, burning sensation in the arms and the right. neck and the face, as well as uh, uh, car seat injury, like people even developed uh, a fractured clavicle mm-hmm. uh, because the car seat was too hard or so. But by far, the, the spinal injuries, uh, the ones we usually see, is, is related to neck and mid-back and lower back pain. So most of the people that come usually they're from uh, backgrounds maybe that uh, professions that carry heavy weight or people have that had uh, car accidents or that 
people that sit uh, long hours behind their work desk. Yes, that's mm-hmm. also uh, still considered spinal injuries as well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, see, when you say whiplash or something, it doesn't have to be in a car accident. You know, it, it, it's, it could be anything. You know, somebody pushed you too hard. If you're swimming or, or you're diving, your neck went too strong to one side or the other, that still the same diagnosis but the cause is different mm-hmm. so whiplash is in the uh, neck area yes uh whiplash. what is it specifically uh, the spinal injuries and the whiplash if you could sure. explain uh whiplash in general is like a sprain and strain or whiplash it's it's caused by you know usually uh by a strong force or or a strong uh motion uh, applied to you let's say somebody pushed you too hard or or causing your neck to go too much to the side, to one side or the other, or going too much forward. Um, yes, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. By far, it's, no. it's, yes. Uh, the more common causes of whiplash is, is the car accident, mm-hmm. um, but it can happen due to something else. Uh, other things that related to it is, is uh, headaches, dizziness, um, concussion, um, That's due to tight muscles of the neck affecting uh, circulations in the brain or or, or to local muscles. Uh, This will develop something called concussion, which is like the brain itself moves. Yeah. Um, And and for that, it's it's the same treatment plan. um, Do you treat also this? Yes, actually. For for people with headaches, Mm -hmm. dizziness, concussion, or even the whiplash, uh, the treatments, uh, the most important thing, Uh, Yulia, it's it's early intervention. Yeah. You you have to come in right away. Uh, don't come in a month or two months later after a car accident. You know, trying to uh, get rid of the whiplash or the headache or the dizziness. By then, it will be a little bit harder. To But treat. the headaches and the dizziness, I know they're dangerous. It's more like irtijaj fil fil ras or fil fil dimaq bikun. Yes, uh, the head the headache and the dizziness and concussion. You have to be careful. There is no bleeding in the brain. There is uh, mm-hmm. nothing happened. There is uh, changes in vision, div- changes in hearing, uh, numbness or tingling. This is a serious issue, especially for a headache. You know, we have some patients because of concussion. As soon as the car accident happened, the as soon as the accident happened, they just walked out of the car and they mm-hmm. throw up because they felt nauseated. So this is very important. Um, Yeah. We have even people with whiplash that's taken a little bit longer. So it's 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 not the injury per se. It's it's more what's the diagnosis. So the, the whiplash is important. The headache is important. Dizziness, the numbness and tingling in in the arms and the legs, um, and that could be uh, an issue because if if there is uh, an injury to a disc in the neck or the lower back, if the disc herniated, or bulged, or if the bone is misaligned. That causes a, a pinched nerve, just like your hand stuck in a door, and um, you know mm-hmm. the door is shut on your hand for the, like a week or two, so your hand just swell up. So the muscles in, in, in the neck and the lower back also swell up, and something mm-hmm. like that we definitely see, very common. And people uh, should not wait sh- too long. No, for the, that. The, the sooner you come in, the better uh, intervention, better treatment, uh, using treatment m- methods that we can. Uh, prescribed for you to to make you feel better and get you to pre-injury status. Car accident injuries, okay. Specifically, uh, the injuries uh, that happen uh, because of uh, the airbag or the uh, the car seat belts. Could you explain more about those kind of injuries? Please? Um, some patients who actually came in and and the injury wasn't like too strong, but the 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 main issue that they have was fractured clavicle they don't know what happened to it but because you know if they're driving certain car or, or the way the car seat is actually too close to the steering wheel or not the, the the force of the airbag affecting your face how far are you uh seated where is mm-hmm. your head uh, is it is it like too close to the airbag or not uh, or the seat belt is too strong it, it can cause fractured ribs it can cause misalignment of the bones in the mid back or in the ribs region as well as um, we have patients because of the airbag came out too quickly the wrist actually fractured the wrist it means i mean you don't even think of that mm-hmm. but if you're both hands on the steering wheel and you got rear ended 
Um, it happens suddenly. You you don't expect that. That's why you never you never know how to uh, maybe react before the accident happens. Correct. And yeah. and it's too quick um, and too fast. And may God bless everybody. But mm -hmm. it's definitely an issue that we have to look into it. Yeah. In every facet of it. it if it's a whiplash, if it's a spinal condition, if it's a numbness or tingling, if it's a concussion, a headache, dizziness, uh, airbag injuries, fractures, we have to really look into it. But what can we do to prevent uh, those injuries from happening? Like sitting maybe in a certain way or um, uh, same thing I heard about when you fall, you should uh, try to fall on certain areas in, of your body and uh, in order to protect maybe the bones or the more sensitive areas like the knees. Yes, of course you have to be careful for that. But um, as far as car accident, to, to prevent as much injuries as possible, try to sit straight. You know, don't put the chair all the way back and, you know, you're crooked and you're not seated straight. You have to be careful. Both feet on the floor, you know, uh, your hands are correctly leveled. Um, there is a distance between you and the steering wheel. Uh, the headrest behind your head to be at a at, uh, nice uh, uh, height. So with that, God forbid, if there is a front impact or, or a side impact or a rear impact, your head doesn't go far down or far forward mm -hmm. to, to, to do that. So certain things, depending on you, how, how you drive, what kind of car you drive, uh, that's all part of uh, prevention for injuries like that. Right. But besides, I'm sorry to cut off, but yeah. besides the uh, car accident prevention, if we talk about lifting in, in a workplace, if, mm -hmm. if you lift a, a two by four uh, versus a, uh, a drywall, always ask for help. You know, if something awkward, something heavy, something it doesn't have to be heavy even. If something really big, get somebody to, to help you out. Don't be just like, oh, I'm trying just to lift this by myself. But it's not the, 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 um, the, the heavy part. It's the size of it. It's how you're bending forward to get it. Uh, is what's important. So most of the prevention is you have to distribute the weight accordingly. You have to put the weight on your pelvis, your legs, your knees. Everything has to lift. Not mm -hmm. only uh, your hands, only or biceps doing all the lifting. So distribute the weight accordingly. That's what's going to prevent injuries. Right. But Dr. Samiani, spinal um, injuries, uh, whiplash also could happen to athletes that carry heavy weights. And they're prepared and their muscles are prepared, but uh, they still... Uh, face uh, same injuries. Correct, because positioning, you know, if, if the athlete or the swimmer, uh, he is not in, in correct posture, he'll have the same problem as somebody else lifting less weight. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the way you lift it is, is, is what caused the injury. The way you move, the way you woke up, that's what caused the injury. Not uh, you being prepared and you stretched and, and you did proper alignment. Now, there is no medicine per se you take to prevent an injury. You know, this is, you cannot take Tylenol or Advil, oh, I'm taking it to prevent a neck pain uh, from a car accident. No, no, you need to <laughs> really, you see. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> so you, you have to be careful how you sit and distribute the weight accordingly, sit straight, and, and, and that's what's going to prevent the problems. They always used to teach us in school, sit straight, sit straight. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, that's very important indeed. Uh, going back to car accidents, um, would you explain please in details about the association of the injury and the speed? Oh, wow. That's really a good question, Yulia. Thank you for, for asking this. And we see this very common. Um, we see patients who are actually, um, after a, a total damage wreck for their car, they walk in out with minor to no injuries versus somebody who got in a small impact, but they developed a, 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 uh, a major injury to their neck or lower back. And we even have the patients having a disc herniation and pinched nerve. So it's not how, the, uh, how much damage it happened to the car. It actually, what were you doing inside the car? Were you looking at the uh, rear view mirror? Did you see the car coming? Mm -hmm. uh, were you bracing yourself, both hands on the wheel and just like waiting for the hit to happen? Were you just uh, relaxed? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if, if, if uh, uh, how far are you from the steering wheel? That's a huge important. Mm -hmm. And also, the, the, the one that's really important that nobody looks at is how much weight is the patient is. Uh, if you are like uh, 100 pounds, of course, you'll be bouncing left and right in the car versus somebody mm -hmm. else who is a little bit uh, yeah. more. So the, the amount of injury, not only depending on the how much damage to the car or the speed versus what you're doing. 
what, what, how did the accident happen? Where the impact was? Was it on the side? Was it in the front? Was it in the back? What kind of car? Because a lot of times, if, if you have a, a big car and you got hit by a smaller car, the other car went under. Mm -hmm. So there is like little or no damage to the car. But if a car went under you, you actually lifted up in the air like three, four feet and you went down. Mm -hmm. So we have patients who develop something called compression fracture because of injury like that. And their car has... Three hundred or four hundred dollars damage to the under, you know, oh. for the for the uh, spare underneath the car, you know, that they have an extra wheel, right? You know, so all the uh, impact happened to the spare, but as I, if you imagine it, the, the the whole car lifted and dropped on the ground, so the whole thing, uh, the patient inside it developed that compression. Looks That's like somebody, interesting, really, yeah. because we uh, always used to think that. Uh, uh, the speed is the main reason. And uh, if you're driving slowly, then whatever accident might happen, uh, God forbid, um, you'll be fine, you'll be safe. But uh, from what you're saying, doctor, that <laughs> some accidents, uh, actually car came from the accidents uh, totally fine, but then the people driving inside um, were injured. Correct. And, you know, we were talking about car accident, we're talking about drivers. But uh, you got to think about if you have uh, uh, passengers, if you have somebody mm -hmm. in the back seat, you know, those are important too. Yeah. Um, there's stories and stories and stories. You know, we have stories of passengers in the back seat who got actually fractured foot. Well, how did this happen? Well, the way the impact was, their foot was on the side or so, they're not sitting straight. Mm -hmm. They actually fractured that. And you can document it, you can see it. The patient went to the emergency room and, and uh, it showed a fractured foot. He's a passenger in the back. How is that possible? Right. And this is how you really got to correlate the, the, the relationship of a speed versus what amount of damage. Oh, it's a total damage to the car. That's mean he's fine or, or not fine. So it's, it's you have to think about... People should keep this in mind, the way they're sitting in, inside the car. It's like they're in the airplane. There are certain uh, ways you should sit when the airplane takes uh, off and uh, uh, stuff like this. So same thing in the car. Uh, for me, I instinctively try to correct the way I'm sitting when I'm in the car. Correct. Uh, I have a question. How long does it take for an injury actually to come up? Which is the time frame of the injury to show up? Um, time frame for the injury depending on the patient. Some, you know, of course, I'm, I'm a, you know, please don't get me wrong to say this. I've yeah. seen guys, of course, uh, muscle yeah. people uh -huh. are <laughs> taking longer time to come into the office versus somebody else. Yeah, uh, it's 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 depending. just because they're like too uh, proud. They have muscles and uh, they're fine. They're doing okay. Well, That's what uh, they think. The the answer I get it's too busy, uh -huh. but. <laughs> Uh, the idea is the, 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 the injury uh, time frame, it depending, really, depending on the patient's tolerance to pain. Some patients think it's small, um, it's not that bad, oh, I'll wait it, I'll wait it. Some people actually don't know the injury themselves until later on, like uh, after a week or two. Uh, for example, we had a patient came in, um, he, he, he helped somebody else's pushes a car. Mm -hmm. So he came about two or three weeks after this incident with numbness and tingling in his arm. And I asked, like, well, what did you do? You know, did you do anything? Did you move? Did you? He goes, nothing. I just woke up with the hand numbness like that. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. So a little bit more history taking. And um, uh, what we ended up thinking, it's, it, it was a neck pain in the beginning, the day after he pushed the car, but he thought maybe he woke up with it, like lafit hawa or, or something in that nature. It's like not a big deal. Then mm -hmm. a little by little start to be serious into the hand numbness and tingling to the point he can't like lift anything or open doors because of how much inflammation in the muscle. So the injury with a car accident, even though if, if you don't feel pain uh, on the spot, it could develop later on. So please come in, get it checked. Um, if, if you see yourself um, any minor pain or so, come on in, get it checked out to be sure that uh, there's no pre you know future Im injury that get worse and will be harder to treat. Dr. Habe, I want to focus on the treatment How do you di diagnose such injuries? Um, the diagnosis is actually the history. 90% uh, of, of the diagnosis is the history of the patient what hurts him like let's say if somebody come in with with um, lower back pain shooting to the leg uh, numbness and tingling feels like pins and needles 
uh, of course, some of the uh, differential diagnosis that you have uh, will include this herniation. So what the patient describes, the, the, the symptoms he has will help us out. The mm -hmm. more information we develop from, from the patient, the more information he gives us, the better diagnosis we get. So 90% is the history, what the patient says. So as far as uh, language barrier, that's huge between doctors. So um, because some of the uh, important information will be lost when you do uh, translation because I'm looking for certain words, but if you you know listening to somebody to translate, we are missing that. Mm -hmm. So history is very important. The second thing that we do that help us out with diagnosis is the physical exam. Uh, when we examine the patient, we do chiropractic examination, uh, we do orthopedic examination, uh, neurological examination to test the muscles, the joints, the range of motion, the blood pressure. The you know we have cases with patients who never thought they have uh, uh, blood pressure or diabetes, um, but once you do the exam after mm. a concussion, they actually their pulse well above a hundred because you know, they are nervous or so, their mm -hmm. blood pressure is elevated. Um, some patients who are actually after, you know, something called CDL, you know, testing and examination, you know, the patients who drive semi-trucks, they have uh, a good uh, physical exam, no diabetes, no blood pressure, but after injury, they develop blood pressure or diabetes. And it's, it's not a myth, you know, it's not like something our parents used to say, oh, I developed diabetes because... Uh, I was upset. It's true. Some patients have developed diabetes due to a car accident or to a major injury or to a major oh. uh, psychological issue. So definitely... That's uh, related to stress that they went through. Correct. And, and with, the accident. Of course, with injury like that, some people loses their jobs. Some people loses their ability to, to, to do mm -hmm. certain things. Of course, it's, it's stressful. Um, so the physical exam is important to get a diagnosis. Uh, we depend a lot on diagnostic imaging, especially after a car injury. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to think about uh, fractures. You have to think about misalignment of a bone. You have to think about any kind of, God forbid, incidental findings, like um, patients come in due mm -hmm. to a neck pain or a disc herniation. But when you do an x-ray, you see a fracture or you see a uh, it's like checking a car. <laughs> yeah, you can see like You take cancer. it to the mechanic and they uh, start seeing other... They tell you a lot, yeah. yes. So diagnostic imaging is, is a lot that we can use for diagnosis. We also use MRIs, CT scans to go after soft tissue. Like if you see a, a patient with a, a swollen muscle or, or a disc herniation, you will not see that on an x-ray you have to do an mri to show all details of the muscle if there is anything ruptured or if any what is an mri mri it's like a magnetic study mm -hmm. um it's mainly for soft tissues it's actual um uh how should i say this like studies Tiny. the the disc itself all the sponge okay. all the ligaments all the tendons uh, any circulation definitely it, it will show that on an mri it's by far the most advanced uh, like magnetic waves. Correct. Use. The most advanced uh, study that you can order to rule out anything, actually. Um, we also use uh, something called uh, EMG and uh, nerve conductive velocity, NCV, to show any muscle, um, if the muscle itself, like, weak mm -hmm. um, due to an injury like that, or a nerve test to see if there is any nerve entrapment. Okay. Uh, doctor, uh, now what we're interested in is to hear about the treatments to the different auto and work-related injuries. What kind of treatments do you offer? Um, by far, the best treatment is uh, early intervention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the sooner you come in, the better off. So especially with uh, disc herniations, whiplash, or um, any kind of injury to a lower back or neck injury, uh, the sooner you come in, the better treatment we uh do chiropractic manipulation to align the spine, put things in place. Uh, we use uh, physical therapy modalities. You know, somebody who came in with a, an accident that happened two days ago or a day ago, uh, we can use ice packs to decrease inflammation. Uh, physical therapy modalities include also 
bracing yeah, to put the neck collar or lower back belt. Mm -hmm. um, we use a lot of taping, you know, to tape the muscles in the neck and lower back, the arms. Mm. Um, there's a strengthening exercises, a stretching, rehab exercises. That's for a long term. Uh, How long does it take? It uh, depends on the diagnosis. Uh, if a patient comes in with a whiplash, uh, only without any nerve damage, without any disc herniation, it will take him less time to jump into the rehab phase versus the uh, uh, chiropractic manipulation and the uh, acute condition treatment. But if somebody with a disc herniation, um, it will take us a little bit longer time. You know, some patients take uh, two years even to actually to be fully pre-injury status. Right. So it's uh, treatment depending on uh, the injury. Not only we use the physical therapy and chiropractic, uh, the patient can use a lot of nutritional supplements to decrease inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the uh, spices. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is... Really? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to mention vitamins or some uh, drugs, medications, but... Absolutely. The spices. Uh, spices. Spices are actually a great anti-inflammatory. Yes, mm -hmm. a great anti-inflammatory. That doesn't mean... You're going to go in and put uh, all the curry on your body <laughs> and run around. But uh, there's a lot of studies indicated that the more curry you have, that actually oh. it's less anti-inflammatory. There is something called bromelain. Bromelain, it's a nutritional supplement. It's 100% uh, pineapples. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about one pineapple, but you're taking a massive amount in, in, of pineapple inside the capsule. Um, but those bromelain or, or those natural muscle relaxants, you have to be specific what time you eat them or what time you, you take them. You know, some of them takes before meals, some of them takes after meals, depending on the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some external modalities that you use, like icy hot, biofreeze, uh, uh, you know, the uh, all lotions that you apply for the muscles. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of over-the-counter treatments. So you do advise with all uh, these uh, steps and treatments with what kind of food... Uh, and the spices that the person uh, should uh, eat and uh, what kind of exercise uh, maybe they should do after what the injury happens to them. Correct. Because what happened with the injury, it, it, it speed up the problem. Uh, it made the neck pain to be a little bit more shown versus somebody who has a, a neck pain in general. So the treatment is very much the same, but of course it's more emphasis when it comes to a car accident mm -hmm. or, or work injury. Um, but uh, certain foods hamburgers and, and oils and all that i understand you know some people take them but that give you a little bit more worse issue and, and and versus a good food that you have because the amount of cells uh that produced into the the system it will be better off with good food versus fats and oils i also staying away maybe from salty food Salt? for the joints and for the uh, like knees and uh, elbows yeah, actually, you can you can check this, uh, you know, a little test. If you, if you bring a salad and you put salt on it and keep it in the fridge overnight, as as you know, in the morning it's like soaked with water. Mm -hmm. So same thing our body. If you if you have a good, you know, bag of chips the night before in a movie with all uh, popcorn with salt all over, of course you'll be a little bit swollen the next day and maybe mm -hmm. a pound or two extra. But also this affecting your joints and muscles and and disc. Uh, the more you have um, water like that, it, it affects the weight on the system and the weight on your body, and that will uh, make... I keep on reminding myself to stay away from salt. I like salty food. We need to work on you a little bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Doctor, what interests uh, the people, uh, the injured people the most is uh, the result of the treatment, uh, right? The uh, prognosis of the treatment. So what are the results? Uh, should they expect uh, to recover fully from uh, their injuries? Um, prognosis on this, it's, it's especially with a car accident injury or a work-related rela injury like that, um, it's very much 50-50. Some patients, um, we can restore their normal function pre-injury status at 100%. Um, on some patients, unfortunately, it takes a little bit more residual treatment that we need to do a little bit further. Um, they need possible injections, lidocaine injection, corticosteroid injections, or a little bit heavier medications, um, Tylenol-3 or Vicodin or whatever. So it, it depending on 
um, the diagnosis, depending on the patient. Some patients who had only a regular sprain and strain, but they required injections. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it depends on the patient. So prognosis is 50-50. Um, some patients, even with, with a disc herniation, the MRI looks really, really bad, but the patient is able to touch his feet, able to squat, able to perform normal activities. They never missed work. So it's, it's depending on the patient's function. Um, prognosis usually is good after car accidents unless there's uh, surgery involved. Uh, then it's a little bit more uh, different and, and, and it's unknown because there was a surgical intervention in it. هيك مستمعينا الاعزاء من هي حلقه اليوم من برنامج يا هلا مع دكتور ابو شنب كانت معكم يوليا ريحاني الى اللقاء. <تصفيق>